Welcome to another installment of my Lightroom Classic Series for the beginner. I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer. And this time we're gonna go over and explore color in Lightroom Classic. We're gonna start at the beginning in the camera where all the images are created and then make our way through the editing process dealing with color along the way. All that coming up. begin with managing color in your photographs, whether it's in Lightroom or any other editing program you might want to use, we have to start in the camera. This makes sense, right? Because in the camera is where this is the device that we're capturing our images in. So we're going to coordinate everything, all of our color settings in the camera across all the devices into the computer and into the programs that we're going to be using to edit our images. To start with, I go into the menu of my camera and go to color space. Now I'm using a Nikon Z9 here. So I just scroll down to the shooting menu and click on color space. Most all the cameras out there have a menu item that allows you to pick your color space. In the case of the Nikon, I have only two choices, sRGB and Adobe RGB. Now without going down a deep rabbit hole into color spaces, just choose one. The definition I've heard on both of these options on color spaces are that sRGB is a simple color space and Adobe is built for more professional images. While that sounds intimidating, it really means that you're only, if you're only going to post images that are viewed digitally, say on the internet or social media uh, in that sort of way, then sRGB is going to work just fine. However, if you think you might want to print your final images someday, Adobe RGB will give you more flexibility. Once a color space is set, they both work at the same speed. There's no difference visually from either one. So my thought is that if there is a possibility that I may make prints or submit something to a magazine for publication at some point, and that's the case, why not set it on Adobe RGB? If there are no side effects, then just set it there and forget it. In fact, if you like, in your editing, you can switch your color space from Adobe RGB down to sRGB, but apparently you can't switch from sRGB to Adobe RGB and get the same flexibility when it comes to printing. I figure that if I may need the versatility of Adobe RGB color space someday, it'll be there. That's why I set my camera that way. Now let's head back to the computer and make a few input settings in there. So when we open up Lightroom Classic here, we go into the main title and we go to preferences. Then in preferences, we go over to external editing. And in external, external editing, we of course have Adobe Photoshop 2023 as our editor, PSD as our file format, and our color space defaults at sRGB. I'm gonna change that to Adobe RGB. And we still are set at 16 bits for our bit depth and 300 for our resolution. Now we're gonna go over to Photoshop. So let's go right click, go to edit in, go over to Photoshop, take this image over there. And if you don't use Photoshop, maybe use something else, go into that program and set up and correct, make your color space proper there too. So you, you would normally think that in Photoshop, you would go into settings and take care of this, but you can't. Go over to edit and pull down all the way down to color settings. Then down here, you're gonna see where your working space is. And that's where we're gonna go in and put in Adobe RGB as our working space. Click OK, and we're good to go on that. So now what we just did is we synchronized all our devices to work within the same color space. The camera that creates the image in the first place is set to Adobe RGB, and then Lightroom as well as Photoshop are set to Adobe RGB. Now, if you wanna work with sRGB, go through those same steps to synchronize everything to the sRGB color space. The main thing is to have them all set the same. Now that we have all our color spaces in the same page, let's go back to the camera and look at a couple of other settings. The first thing that we wanna do is you're shooting in RAW, right? If not, check out my video on why you wanna shoot in RAW format. I'll leave a link up here and also down in the description for it. 
But if you want to just take my word for it, you get a lot more flexibility with the raw images than you do with JPEG. Now let's access your white balance in your camera. On the Z9, there's a WB button on the back that allows me to, a quick button to get right into my white balance settings. A typical way I see white balance being used is to set the white balance on automatic and leave it. And this is okay. It's just that there might be a better way to work with white balance in your camera. So when you leave your camera set on auto white balance, it works pretty well, but like any automatic setting on your camera, it can be fooled. The camera has no idea what is the most important part of the image to you, the photographer. It's just taking an overall reading and altering the color for that. For example, if you were to take a photograph of a subject where the background was say bright green, the camera's gonna take that information and consider it when it's creating the image and probably add a little magenta to try to balance it out and correct it. That may not be how you want to render that subject that's in front of that green background. In the next image, the subject is moved and now the green background is not as dominant. So the camera's computer reads the, the scene and adjusts accordingly. So now you have the same subject with two different color renditions. While this is not difficult to alter in Lightroom later, it is just one more step that you have to go through when you're editing your images. A trick I learned from a wedding photographer friend of mine was that when he's shooting a wedding, he always shoots in manual for exposure and with just one setting on the white balance. That way, if he has to correct more than one image, he can easily correct them all at the same time in Lightroom Classic. To accomplish this in the camera, I set the white balance to most of my wildlife and landscape images to cloudy. This setting is a bit warmer than daylight and it's pleasing to the eye and it's consistent. This way when I'm editing, the color cast isn't gonna change based on the background colors or the subject colors. If I'm off, I can correct it easily in Lightroom Classic as a group of images. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If I had set it on auto color balance, then each image might be, have to be tweaked separately, taking a heck of a lot more time when I'm doing the initial edit. So choose an appropriate white balance setting in your camera. Now you can use daylight if you're gonna be out shooting in broad sunlight, shade if you're working in a shady area, or do what I do and leave it for the most part on cloudy setting. Now if you ever get lost and don't feel like the images you're producing are, are the right color, then just switch it back to auto balance. It's not gonna hurt you. The only drawback is that you have to know that you're gonna probably spend more time in the editing process tweaking those images just a little bit. Since this is a Lightroom tutorial, let me show you how all this works in a normal editing workflow. First off, as I mentioned earlier, if you're shooting JPEG, you should switch to shooting RAW. One of the reasons is how color is processed in Lightroom. Let me give you an example in processing that's really just starkly apparent when you're shooting JPEG versus RAW. Okay, these two images here I shot in at the same time. So one is a JPEG. You can see down here that it's a JPEG. And the other one is a RAW image look very, very similar. They're not gonna be much difference when you're actually shooting them. But watch this, when we go to the develop module and we come over to our white balance, we have a choice of as shot, auto, or custom. Those are our only choices because this is a JPEG. If we take a look at our raw file, when we come over to as shot, we have all those choices we had in our camera. So if you get it wrong in the camera, it's pretty easy just to click right here and get it the way you want it. So for us, it's a pretty simple way that we can do that. So you can put it up to as shot. Now here's how this works. If we go in here with this eyedropper tool, we can use this as a white balance tool. So what happens is it's looking for something to be neutral. So if it's a neutral shot between somewhere like a gray or a white or a black, it will neutralize that color. So let's click on this background and now let's check our balance again. If you look at the numbers down here on the bottom of this box, you're gonna see that they're all the same. That's because Lightroom has switched this to a neutral color and the red and the green and the blue are all gonna be the same number in terms of how it looks to Lightroom. So that neutralizes that color and neutralizes the color cast. As an example, if we go over here and we take, this is the JPEG and we take our same eyedropper tool and we click on it, watch what happens. See the difference between those two images? As we look at them side by side, you can see this is the raw file, this is the JPEG file. You can see that the JPEG file, just in a simple color correction, 
it changed it dramatically exposure wise because there's not as much depth in that image like there is in a in a raw file so again not to preach too much about raw but it is really a, a better way to go when you're working with just about any aspect in lightroom any of your images and it shows again here in in color as to why it's an issue okay so let's go in here here's another shot that was obviously shot incorrectly we'll go into the develop module we grab our eyedropper tool and we want to hover this over now take a look over here in this screen here you're going to see things change right all those colors are changing and what it's looking for is a neutral type of a tone so i know her hat's gray i know her jacket is black and i know this is gray as well so let's just click on the jacket and now it has, has neutralized this to make it a nice, beautiful, even color. We don't we got rid of that color cast from the, the wrong shooting mode. And now if we take our eyedropper tool and hover this over here, you can see that our numbers are very, very close in each quadrant that we move this to. Now, obviously, if we're going to be into colors like the blonde of her hair or this part of her mitten, those are going to be obviously different colors. But these are neutral colors, and we want the neutral colors to be all about the same when we look at those numbers down on the bottom of this little target screen. Okay, so that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how this works. And so if we're working on these images and we've neutralized one, and we know that the color is perfect in there, we can simply hold the shift key down, click all four of these images that are the same, and go to sync settings. And when you have sync settings, you can, of course, check all or check none. But in this case, we're just going to do white balance, and then we're going to go synchronize. And then Lightroom's going to take all of those images, and they're all synchronized. And this is the beauty of shooting in one color space. It will make those all the same. It'll do the same thing to each one because all those images were shot originally at the same process. So in another image here, we're going to take this in. Here's an image. We go over into the develop module. We grab our eyedropper tool and we just hover over something that we think is white. Well, obviously, this is an egret, so it's going to be white. We click on it and it whitens the bird quite a bit. Now, it does look a little cold to me. So what you can do is come in here and customize this by sliding this over and adding a little more warmth to it if you like. So that gives you the ability to control the color that you're creating in Lightroom, even by just simply using the eyedropper tool. You can augment it each time that you want to use it. So the sliders are exactly that. We have the ability to move the sliders left and right to change our color. So obviously if we want a cooler shot, the temperature goes to cold. And you can see down here on this thing, we've got blue on one side, which means it's colder, yellow on the other side. So this is the slider that allows the temperature to change on our images, okay? And then this is our tint. So this is the color, like obviously on this side it's green, and on this side it's magenta. This is how you add a different tint to your image. So this box alone really takes care of most all of your editing needs for just balancing color. Now we're not gonna get into extreme color changes yet, but we will. And in this case here, we're just trying to balance our images. So each, each image that we go to is gonna be balanced and look clean, okay? So again, if we went back to this image where we originally started with, we'll reset that. If we come in here and hover over here, this is just balance this, and now we got a normal orange of that flower, and that's how that's actually gonna look, okay? So a pretty simple way to use this eyedropper tool to not only, not only balance things, but also tell us that we did it right by looking at those numbers that come up. And always, whenever you do something like this, if we want to reset this, you'll see this. So right now it's as shot, right? And you have all these choices that you may want to look at. As we click on this and we use our eyedropper tool and click somewhere, this changes these, these sliders right here. And then this goes to custom because now you've created a custom change to this, right? It was based on where we clicked that eyedropper tool. That's where this is actually created from. What I like to do when I come into an image is I'll click on uh, the white balance tool. This will be like the first thing that I do. I'll click on this and then I'll look for something to be a neutral color. Sometimes I'm looking over at the preview over here or sometimes I'm looking at the box that has the, the numbers of the red, green, and blue down in the lower part of this target box. And I can see that this is pretty close. I can click into the gray of the sky. And that's the thing. When you're looking at an image, 
there are times that you look at it and say, wow, there's no gray, black, or white in that image. Well, look around. Sometimes it's a white of an eye. Sometimes it's a, a, like, check out this one here. Here's some white that actually is on this uh, deer right in the front here. And if we hover this over, you can see those numbers are pretty close. So let's go ahead and click on it. And now it balances it. The, the colors in the coat are a lot warmer. It's not as cold. Looks a lot better that way. So it's a pretty simple way to, to get your images all balanced right out of the gate. So what we've learned today is we have the ability to set our cameras to the right color space, set our Lightroom at the correct color space that matches our camera. And then of course, if you're using uh, Photoshop, then you set that as well. So that in all of these programs, you're all working in the same color space. So whenever you're working in Lightroom, you always wanna work with in this panel and work your way down. And the idea here is the very first thing you come across in the basic panel is gonna be your white balance. So it's important to try to white balance all of your images as you start. That way you're working from a nice base before you start getting creative and changing things. So a pretty simple way that you can change it right here in Lightroom. Now, if you don't wanna use the, the eyedropper tool, you can just use the sliders and move the sliders around to a point wherever it is that you're, the color that you're trying to go for, the look that you're trying to go for. So it gives you that creative ability to do that. And you've only just started in the basic panel of Lightroom as far as color goes. If you found something useful in this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the little bell to be notified of my next video. If you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Or you're always welcome to email me at terry at imagelight.com. If you'd like some more advanced techniques for improving your images, check out my ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. This book is all about making the sharpest images possible. From camera techniques to post-processing, if you want to create sharper images, check this out. The ebook is only found on my website at imagelight.com. Just click on the digital products page and you'll find it right there. Be ready for an instant download. I'll leave a link in the description below for this book too, if you're interested. I have some new videos coming out all about working with color. So next week, we'll continue and show you more tips in Lightroom Classic on how to work with color in your images to be the very, very best. Thanks for watching.